Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is part two on this C200 Mercedes-Benz. So in the first video we did the primer work, prep work, color matching and we started the masking and yeah we sort of finished off halfway through the edge masking so we're going to pick straight up where we left off. So in this video here we're obviously going to be finishing off the masking, spraying it and then we'll do a little bit of polishing. Like yeah this job here came up really clean. There was only like one or two nibs in it and then there was a tiny little dry spot which i didn't even see until it was out in the polishing bay so i just gave that a very light scuff back and then shined it up with the buff so yeah edge masking right now i do get a few questions about how i mask and all that kind of thing so my best advice if you want to learn more about my masking methods is to go over to my second channel there will be a link in the description of this video to a channel called The Gunman Raw. I know a lot of you already know about it, but I find and always have found narrating the masking stage a little bit tricky. I mean, I don't know what else I can say about what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, there's a few things I can say, like clean your panels down prior to doing your masking, because you I guess you don't want to be masking over dirt. That That's to go for all the edges, in, including the body of the car so you don't want the car covered in dust because even though it's going to be underneath your masking film it can sometimes still get caught on the plastic as you're throwing the piece of plastic over things like that but apart from that I really do recommend going over to my second channel where I've got some videos that go for like over half an hour where you'll be able to watch me mask the entire side of a whole car up um, and it's one of those things that if you want to learn something, half an hour is probably not much out of your time, out of your day, you know. Uh, I know that that's the way I sort of approach learning anyway. I guess for a lot of people at home, they don't really mind because I guess they finish their day's work anyway, sitting down after work, sit down and watch a gunman video where I'm masking and I'm shooting the breeze. I'm sort of talking uh, to you guys as I'm uh, masking the car up so whatever comes to mind as I'm masking I might um, give you a couple of tips that I'll actually forget about when I do get home but that's obviously why I sped the video footage up of the masking however now we've gone back down to normal speed and it looks like I'm working really slow but what I'm doing now is just uh, spraying some wax and grease remover over the entire panel in one of those atomizer bottles and then wiping it off with a lint free cloth so these are the Sontara wipes nice clean lint free cloth to wipe down your panel so they're obviously sterile like they're, they're new you know and you're not getting like a, a rag that's been bleached and washed and all that kind of thing with a possibility of contaminants on it or anything like that so yeah pretty handy to have and they're not that expensive they last for quite a while the bots of these um, obviously just giving it a really good wipe down inspecting the panel at every stage obviously like you don't you want to make sure that you haven't got any cut throughs or that your the edges of your masking are nice and also that you haven't missed any shiny spots you know it's one thing that Alan told me that when he went to trade school that some of the apprentices and their prep work was just atrocious like you can look at that panel now and I can even tell just off the video footage there's really not any shiny spots left on that panel and that's what you need like the paint needs something to stick to and yeah, you really need to key right into it so that um, the new paint is going to stick to the old paint. Pretty uh, pretty straightforward and it's one of the fundamental and first things that you will learn when you're a spray painter apprentice. So painter apprentices going to trade school and not knowing that or, or, or at least not practicing it or not caring about it is uh, not acceptable if you ask me. And I don't know who you can blame it on, whether or not it's a combination of the apprentices themselves not listening to their tradesmen or their trade school teachers but yeah maybe they just needed to be a little bit more strict on them and I'm pretty strict on my apprentices I don't even let them in the spray booth until they can get every step leading up to that correct so if you can't prep a panel mask a panel okay look I'll leave I'll let you get away with color matching but the rest of it, you need to be able to prep and mask a panel properly before I'll even let you in there to, to pull the trigger on the panel. I mean, it's good to get thrown in the deep end, but at the end of the day, that's how I was taught. I was taught that once you can get it right, you'll just be going in the booth by yourself. And that's actually what happened. Like, I was doing good jobs. I was masking cars up properly. I was preparing them properly for my tradies. They were going in and spraying them. They never really had many issues with my prep or masking or 
any of the steps that I did. And there was just one day, I was just walking around the, the workshop up at the paint bench or something. My tradesman said, come here, follow me. You're going to paint the side of that um, XF Falcon. It was the first car I painted at work. So yeah, it came out off the gun. We didn't even polish it. It was awesome. Like full, full side of this XF Falcon off the gun, no polishing. It was my first paint job. I was pretty, pretty proud of that. But what you see me doing here is actually wiping off a little speck. It looked like a little white speck. So when I was applying the 599, which is basically blending clear, it's basically just clear base coat binder. Um, I put that down to help the blend. Obviously a little white speck came out. So I just quickly, uh, that was just something that I had to do quickly, get a bit of prep sole while it was still wet and wipe it off. And then just put the lightest mist of color over there just to hide the very slight smudge that was there and you will never know once the job was done. Sometimes you just got to come up with those little fixes on the fly obviously and um, yeah most of the time I've, uh, I've got a way to fix those kind of little things and look worst case scenario if it's that bad well you know you got to respray the panel but most of the time we don't have to redo we don't have many reworks at this workshop so it's pretty good for that we've got a good team and pretty experienced team but um, yeah, the gun I'm using here is one of my favorites, a bit of a channel favorite as well. So it's ANI R150. This is the older one. I've got it in the 1.2, uh, but the newer ones, they're silver now. So yeah, pretty much the same gun, but they've done like a bit of a, an update to the, um, the color and yeah, the finish on the body of those ANI mini guns. But very handy little mini guns I have, because I mean, I didn't have a massive room, amount of room to do my blend, so I reckon, if I was using a full-size gun on a, a little blend like that, there's a good chance I could have ended up with, um, yeah, like a bit of color overspray up near the bonnet and even up near the back edge of the fender um, up to the, the door itself as well. So that's really not what I wanted. I wanted to um, keep that color contained on the inside of the panel so that edge to edge, um, yeah, we're not going to be able to see any color differences. So as you saw, I just put a couple of coats down, low pressure. So two bar with that ANI was actually low pressure. They're a funny gun, the ANIs, and they seem to operate well off high or low pressures. But yeah, I found two bar seems to work um, for base coat with the ANI. And for clear coat here, I'm using the brand new DeVilbes uh, DV1. So this has got the C1 air cap on it. I believe it's the only air cap they have for clear coats at the moment. However, the B1, which is what they call their base coat cap, that works just fine for, for clear coats as well, but it just lays the base coat so well that I don't even use it for, for clear coat most of the time. Yeah, I'm actually really enjoying using this DV1 for clear coat. It's something that, like, I don't always use it. It, it does feel quite familiar. It's got a nice big fan on it. It, it does get a very nice flat finish on it. Um, and I have found that if you lower the pressure slightly below like 1.4, so if you go down to like 1.3 bar, you're actually going to get more of the, um, the factory European finish. However, if you go closer to the 1.4, 1.5 bar on the digital gauge that is, because it will read slightly different on the, the base of the gun. Um, but uh, yeah, I've found if you go closer to what is two bar on the base of the gun, it'll be a little bit too flat so yeah maybe lower that pressure a little bit which is what i did on this job and you'll probably find it uses a little bit less material and also replicates that european finish a little bit easier too so yeah look i've seen some people say that they reckon that this gun's um like saving them 30 to 40 percent on top of what their pro light would use i'm like wow man that is like that's a game changer but it's for me, I've found it uses more. Like, I've found that this gun actually uses more clear than my Pro Light with the TE20 on it. So, look, it, it says uh, HVLP on the cap, but it's not. It's not a HVLP, trust me. All you need to do is go and look at the air consumption of this gun compared to the other air caps on the Pro Light. A HVLP Pro Light uses something like 16 or 16 and a half. CFM, whereas this gun uses something like nine or nine and a half CFM. So even those numbers alone should tell you that obviously HVLP uses um, less material, right? 
you should be around 70 to 75 percent transfer efficiency so the closer you go to LVLP the flatter finish you're gonna get but you're gonna use a little bit more material so even those numbers alone should tell you that the DV1 wants to use more material so I don't know how people are claiming that it's like saving 30 or 40 percent material I mean as I say like let's just say that you're at like 70 percent transfer efficiency with the HVLP how can this thing save 30 to 40 percent more than that I mean it just seems a little bit ludicrous to me um, extraordinary claims I guess uh, require extraordinary evidence and I'm yet to see any that the DV one's saving anywhere near that amount of material and as I say if anything it's it's using more material so all of that aside we've given it a quick denib now so I've got one of these tungsten denibbers and it's a pretty cool one it's got like a little bit of uh, rope on it so I just hang that around my neck when I'm out in the polishing bay you know sometimes you'll start buffing and then you'll last minute once you're running the buff over it you'll see like another nib there and then yeah just grab the, the tungsten around your neck give it a quick um, D nib and then continue buffing so this is what I do like on a nicer car I'll do this I'll get the tungsten and then give it a, a slight sand with some 2000 grit and you can use your your hands that's totally fine because using the tungsten you've taken the profile of the um, high spot of the D nib right down so it's basically flat and then the the sandpaper will take say the last 10 percent out and another good thing about sanding it by hand is that it's going to sand a little bit more even so you're not going to have like a, a flat spot in the finish of the orange peel too so you'll you'll sort of like blend out the orange peel but yeah at the end of the day everyone's got their own little method and yeah, mixture of products that works when they're doing their denibbing and look I've worked in a lot of panel shops over the years and I don't think I've ever seen two painters that do denibbing and polishing exactly the same I mean I probably have I probably have there's probably been a point where I was working in a shop where a couple of the guys we, we did it pretty much the same but I guess what I'm trying to say is that there's so many different ways to skin a cat but at the end of the day it really matters where you get to yeah. in, in the end. It doesn't matter how you get there, it matters what it looks like in the end. You know what I mean? So don't turn around and tell me that I'm doing this wrong because I don't do it the way that you do it. You know, I, that seems to be the way these detailers operate. They'll watch and maybe, they're probably even keyboard warrior detailers. They'll probably watch like a, a YouTube video and the guy on the YouTube video primes his pad because you have to prime the pad. And if you don't prime the pad, you are not doing it properly. Look, I've tried priming the pad, but I personally prefer putting the compound on the panel. It's where I want it. Um, I've found that if you put it onto the pad, it doesn't actually end up exactly where you want it on the panel. So yeah, look, do you, you do you. If you want to prime your pad, go for it. I don't have to, you know. <laughs> I guess it's just like painters, they, they don't come up and tell me, oh, you have to prime your pad, or you're not allowed to use that compound, you have to use this one, or you have to use this pad instead of that pad, you know. It's no different to prep work, you know. Everyone's got their own little bag of tricks. You might prep your cars this way, I might do it slightly different. It's not to say anyone or either of us are wrong. Um, you do the way you do it, I'll get to the end and you get to the end and that's all that really matters you know end results is all that really matters the quality of the overall job that you do that's what matters and you shouldn't worry about too much about what other people are doing i guess if, if it doesn't really affect you sorry i got onto another detailers rant it's just so easy to get onto because every single time i upload a video of myself polishing i'll just get these comments from detailers or at least keyboard warrior detailers that they're just like, oh, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong. But yeah, all of that aside, let's just continue on with the job. So first up, I obviously gave it a tungsten and then I uh, used some 2000 grit by hand. I then decided to use the mini buff because there really was only those three small sections. If there was more or it was, you know, like a bonnet or a hood, what you call in America, or, you know, a larger job, probably would have used a big buff. In fact, I definitely would have, but there was only three little d that I needed to do. I decided just use the mini buff, it's easy quick and easy and then get the big buff uh, to finish it off with the uh, fine black pad. So I've actually been leaning away from using the Roops Bigfoot these days. 
I've found it's more so that the pad is so hard to clean out and it just clogs up with stuff really quickly. So I used to swear by it, but these days I've actually turned back and started using just the rotary buff even for my final glaze stage. So yeah, look, I use the um, 3M uh, polish for both stages. So step one first and step two second. I think they work just fine, you know, and it's one of those things you get these people just so, so passionate about how bad 3M is. I'm like, well, I like it. It works for me, you know. You might use Juice or you might use whatever brand, but no one's right, no one's wrong. I don't think so, you know. I don't care what polish you use. And in fact, I, I don't really, I don't love, like, I guess I don't hate doing polishing. I guess it takes me away from doing what I really love, which is the, the spray painting side. But these days, I've been doing all my own polishing, nearly all my own polishing. So, I'm, yeah, I've been spending a bit of time, a bit more time than usual, out the back doing some detailing. And as I say, like, I haven't been hating it, but... I'd, I'd much prefer being being in the um, the spray booth doing my next job. However, I, I don't mind the side of like finished product. It's like that's it, that's done, and you can really, really admire the beautiful paintwork. You can take those imperfections out and just really look at the beauty of your paintwork. I don't know. I just I still get a kick out of it after doing this job, and uh, I, at the same time, within the same couple of days, I was doing this um, bonnet of this uh, Mercedes X250, and I was just walking around on cloud nine. Like, I was in such a great mood because I got to paint two Mercedes-Benz. Like, I love my Mercedes-Benz. I made a quick mention to that in the, the first video, so I was, yeah, really happy that I got to work on this car. And I think there's going to be a day not too far away that I'm actually going to buy one of these. And I think it's actually going to be this model and this shape. So C200, maybe a C250 uh, Mercedes Benz 20, 2019 model. Yeah, hopefully in a few years I'll be able to uh, justify spending that kind of money on a car. Until next time, Gunners, get out there and paint some shit. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. And this has been another Gunman Production.